fucking don't. You are alive. All I see is that one picture on the screen. I don't see anything else. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining me. How is everybody today? It's a little uh, sunny and moist here today on the East Coast, but um, little storms last night, so we're all good now. I have been so excited about doing this this week. Um, I've got tons to show you. The project that we're doing is Go Pick Daisies. And it involves some deck work. Fluid acrylics, of course, and it also involves some ink, and it involves some stamps, and some paper, and some decoupage. We've got lots to cover, and it'll, I can promise you it's gonna be a lot of fun. If you're painting along, uh, I am going to move very quickly. I'm gonna warn you ahead of time. I'm going to move along fairly quickly because I have this all prepped out. Um, but the video will be available after the fact, so you'll be able to uh, review it at your leisure. It will be posted on my Facebook page. It will also be posted on my website uh, in the video section, and it'll also be on my YouTube channel. So you can go back and refer to it at any time. So if you miss something or if you have a question, um, I have a little help in the studio today. My son is managing the cameras and the software and the Facebook feeds. So uh, if you have a question, I'm pretty sure he'll let me know and I will answer it to the best of my abilities. Um, so let's get started. Now, the piece that we're working on is called Go Pick Daisies. And that's our pattern right there. Go Pick Daisies. The pattern is on the website. There is a coupon code for it if you don't have it. Um, and there's also a, um, a simplified supply list available with conversion. So if you don't have the fluid acrylics or don't have access to them, I do have the conversion colors in that list for you so that you can use your regular Americanas. Okay, so if you're as excited as I am, let's get started. So we're gonna switch to the overhead camera. So, I'm starting with an eight by 10 piece of MDF. It's already been prepped. I used a coat of gesso on it. And then I put two coats of Decorts uh, Lamp Black, the Americana Lamp Black on this and let it dry. I gave it a light sanding because the MDF has a tendency to pill a little bit. So uh, I give it a nice light sanding and now we're ready to go. So the first color we're going to work with is Americana Warm White and we're going to create sort of a visual texture on this board. Now the brush that I'm using is, uh, this is one of my favorites, you can tell by its current state. Um, this is a Dynasty Encaustic, it's a natural bristle. This is a one inch oval or a three quarter inch oval. It is a little on the coarse side, it's not as soft as your usual decorative painting brushes. This is exactly what we want. So we're going to get that brush wet, just a little bit of water, and take out the excess. And I'm going to pick up some warm white with that brush. Now we're working vertically. We're going to pull this like that. Do you see those little brush marks that are left in it? You're just going to keep going until you start running out of paint. And do you see that funky texture that it creates? All of this vertical stria. It's not perfectly white, because you know, perfect is boring. So I'm gonna pull that like so. I kind of like it when it runs out completely and then you get some really interesting drag marks in the paint. So there it is. That's as difficult as that gets. So you can tell that it's not perfect. It's not solid white. I have bits of the black showing through. It looks gray in some areas. It looks brighter in some areas. Perfect, that's exactly what I want. Perfectly flawed, that's what I like. So, it's not rocket science. This part is super, super simple. The only thing we have to do is wait for that to dry. So I went ahead and created one last night. So now I have one that's all ready to go. This is the fun part. Um, everybody knows that I love my Stampenda stamps. I've got tons of them, literally tons of them. Um, I pulled three. You can use almost anything though. Um, this one is sort of a canceled postage stamp. I had a pretty little butterfly. And this one is my all-time favorite stamp. This is Vintage Note. 
This, these are all available from stampendus.com. They are absolutely fantastic. I love their stamps. They're reasonably priced. The quality is good and, and they're easy to get. They have them available to everybody right on their website. So vintage note, and then I've got some fun butterflies. You can use anything, dragonfly, butterfly, a flower, whatever blows your hair back. And then I've got a canceled stamp. This is just to create a little bit of background interest in this. And then we need a stays on stamp pad. These are my favorite too. You can get these at michaels.com. Again, these are really easy to find. They're available in, in most uh, craft and hobby stores. So michaels.com carries this particular one, this nice black one. So we're going to take that vintage note stamp and neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. I'm just going to whack a little bit of that vintage note into the background. You know, sort of randomly all over the place. I, I don't really care if you can read it or not. It's not the point. <laughs> We're just going to create a little interest. So all over the surface, the only thing I recommend is that if it's font, try to have it going in one direction because the human eye reads that way from left to right, top to bottom. It's just keeps things from getting too busy in the background. Now I've got this little canceled postage stamp. I'm gonna pop a few of these in here. And again, I'm not worried about getting them perfect. I just sort of, I want that little change in texture, if you will. And now that butterfly, again, I don't want this to be perfect. I just want it kind of there. So let's stamp all over that. And where do I want it? Oh, right there looks good. Now, I usually use one, maybe two of these, and that's about it on this space because it's, you know, it's not that big a space. So, there we go. Perfectly imperfect. Now, the stays on actually dries very, very quickly. So, we're just going to give that a second to dry, and then we can continue working. The next stage is adding some of those really fun, vibrant colors to the background. Like I have a prepped one here, so I'm just going to show you this. This is what we're going to develop. We're going to pull in some of these fluid acrylic, and we're going to do a little bit of stenciling and whatnot in there before we transfer that image on. These colors, as you can see, are very transparent because you can still see the stamps through it. You can still see all of those vertical stria and marks in that base coat of white over top of the black. So this is what we're going for is this multiple colors and layers of colors for that background. So it's super, super easy. And I think just about dry, not quite. So now to do that, we're going to work with um, just a nice big angled shader, nothing fancy. So your favorite angled shader will do. I'm working with the Dynasty Black Gold. This is an angled shader. And you can, again, you can tell, much loved. <laughs> this one's has seen better days, but I like this one. So make sure that you get your brush good and wet. And then I'm gonna talk about my, uh, my secret weapon. I love this stuff. This is Joe Sonia's Fast Drying Glaze Medium. The the product itself is available on Joe Sonia's website at joesonias.com. Great product. This stuff works beautifully for thinning color, for doing line work. And I keep sort of a shot glass or a small jar of it on my workstation, just like this, so that when I'm adding color, I can dress my brush in it. And a wet brush, I just dress it Pull it up the sides so that it's wet but not dripping. And then I get to work using my favorite Decorate Media Fluid Acrylic. These are wonderful. They're nicely transparent and heavily pigmented. So I have on my palette is going to be Cobalt Teal Hue. A little bit of Primary Magenta.
a little bit of diorite yellow. A little bit of green gold. And then of course I have to have a purple in there, so we've got a little bit of diox purple. So it's not a really extravagant color palette by any means. These are the five colors that you're going to work with right away. So again, I have my brush loaded with that Joe Sonia's Fast Drying Blaze, and I'm going to start with the Cobalt Teal Hue. For some unknown reason, I just I always seem to start in the upper left-hand corner. You don't have to, but the only thing that's important is this, is the order of the colors, <laughs> because we're going to kind of work this similar to the color wheel. So I'm just pity patting that color in. It's very loose. And then I just let the color run out. Just like that. This color is so rich, so bright. And you can go back and pick up more if you find that the color is not as intense as you would like it. So I'm doing going coming about halfway down my surface and halfway across, a little past. Halfway across. I don't want it to look square. So I'm going to rinse that brush out and I'm going to dress it again in that Joe Sonia medium. This essentially just acts like a flow medium. It keeps everything moving really, really smoothly. The next color I'm working with is uh, the green gold and I'm going to pull that into the upper right corner. Again, it's neatness doesn't count, perfection is to be avoided at all costs. So you just make sure that the colors overlap slightly. Then I'm going into that diorite yellow. You notice I didn't bother to clean my brush because that yellow and that green are very close to each other. So I'm just going to, whoo, that yellow is bright. This is a great color, I love diorite yellow. Now I'm coming about a third of the way down with this one. Now I'm going to rinse. Get some more of that gold, that Joe Sonia's medium in there. Now I'm picking up a little uh, primary magenta. Now this is an in your face red. So I'm going to slip slap some of that red in. Then I'm gonna carry it over that yellow. And what happens when you mix yellow and red? You get a really nice hot orange. That's what happens. So there we go. And again, neatness doesn't count. I'm gonna put a little more along here. So what happens when you mix a little bit of red with blue? You get purple. Woo! Love that biox. Diox purple. Ah, <laughs> some friends from Brazil and Peru are visiting us today. That's so nice. Thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so you can tell these colors, they kind of meet and then they slightly overlap. Whenever you feel the color is just not as got as much oomph as you'd like, let it dry, and then you can put another layer over top. I love how vibrant these fluid acrylics are. And I'm, I'm kinda in love with the red. There we go. And you blend right over top so those colors layer and I whoopsie, so I'm going to fix something here. There we go. I got a little heavy handed with the red. So I'll just soften that. All right, so I have all of those five colors on there the diox purple, that cobalt teal hue, the primary magenta, 
the green gold and the diorolite yellow. I'm kind of wanting a little more green in here. It looked a little wanting next to that yellow. There we go. So you can tell I'm not really worried about getting those perfect blends. A lot of this is going to be tucked in behind some of the design elements. So, you know, the daisies are going in here and then there's dragonflies and all of those neat things. So you don't have to worry too much about harsh lines, especially with these. So look how, how fun those colors are. Very vibrant. So now we've got this one good to go. You have a couple of options. You can do your stenciling beforehand or you can do it after the fact. Um, it doesn't really matter. I, I like it either way, but if you do it after the fact, I find that you get some interesting effects when the stencil elements overlap some of the painted elements. So um, you can do it that way. I like the look of it. In this particular case, I've gotten my uh, stenciling done first, like you see in this board. I've done the stenciling first. So how you want to do it is entirely up to you. You can stencil first and have this type of look where the flowers and everything overlap it, or you can do the stenciling after the fact. It just gives you a unique look when the images are layered one on top of the other. So we're going to continue with this one as it stands right now. And again, we need this to dry a little quicker than it is. It's very damp here today because of the, the rain last night but it shouldn't take too, too long for this to dry. Oh my goodness, we've got a bunch of people joining us from Arkansas and from Myrtle Beach and from uh, California. Thanks guys, I'm glad you came to see it and to participate a little bit. So while I'm waiting for this to dry, let's talk about our giveaway. So we have a giveaway. We have some Dynasty brushes, and we have some Enchanted and some Enchanted Shimmer from Decort. If you haven't seen these, they're amazing. They're so much fun. And although the pattern didn't originally call for this, um, I thought it'd be fun to show you what you can do with them in this particular piece. So we're going to use Enchanted Shimmer in the white and the green um, Enchanted for the dragonfly. So you're going to see it. It'll give it a really nice pop and a little bit of uh, a little bit of glamour, let's call it. Um, so I have a set of these, of the Enchanted Shimmer and the Enchanted, and a nice set of Dynasty Black Gold brushes to the winner. I think the graphic will probably tell you to, to like and share the video. And uh, once you have, you're entered. And uh, tomorrow morning, we will have a name for you. So that'll be fun. Everybody likes to get a present every once in a while. So, so that will be yours. Enchanted, Enchanted Shimmer, and some Dynasty brushes. Boy, oh boy. Things never dry fast enough to suit me. So I'm gonna switch over to this one and we'll discuss the stenciling that one is really taking quite a while to dry. So the stencil that I used is this one. It's the half inch Harlequin stencil. And I'm really not too keen on this stenciling job I did on this one, so I'm going to go over it a little bit. So I'm going to line up my stencil. And you'll notice that the stencil pattern, the diamond pattern, actually goes off the edge of, of the surface. When things are utterly perfect, you know, the points of the diamonds and whatnot fall in there, it gives the illusion that it's just sitting there. If you go off the page slightly, off the surface slightly, it gives you the illusion that the design element continues in another direction. So that's it just makes things more interesting. So I'm going to line up my just a little bit and I'm going to tape it in place a little bit of um, painters tape or a little piece of safe release tape and that will keep that in good order 
Now, the stencil brush that I'm working with is the Dynasty Stencil Pro. This is a synthetic stencil brush. It is not a natural hair, um, which means it has a couple of benefits, and one of which is in cleaning. Now, I know you're gonna find this funny. We, I have been shopping all over town looking for a bottle of hand sanitizer. Not because I need it to, to sanitize my hands, but I need it to clean my stencil brush. And I like a really good one. So the one I've been using is this one. This is Minus Distillery Hand Sanitizer. It's um, a denatured alcohol. It's very, very strong. It's 80%. It is perfect for cleaning these synthetic stencil brushes. It removes old, even old paint that gets stuck up in there. So um, it's ideal. But the biggest benefit to it is that it dries immediately. It evaporates very quickly so you can continue to work without having to worry about having too much moisture in your brush. So I'm going to go at this with a little bit of um, warm white. So I picked up a little warm white on my stencil brush and then I take a piece of shop towel and I'm going to remove the excess. I don't want this to be goopy on this surface and I'm going to work in a circular fashion and change directions frequently. Now there's almost no paint left in this brush. That's what I want. I want it to be very subtle and I would like to be able to still see some of those design elements right through. So it gives it a nice crisp clean pattern. This other one was done with a little inexpensive stencil brush, the only one I could find that was clean. <laughs> so I'm going to stencil lightly with that, stuff it on. I like it when they sort of run out so that they're imperfect, there's no specific pattern. You know, and some of them are missing all together or only portions of them are stenciled. And I like how that looks. I just, I think it, that indistinct appearance just does more for this than having perfect opaque diamonds everywhere. So, okay, I'm happier. <laughs> I'm much happier. <laughs> so, there we have it. So, on, as you can tell, on this one, I've already transferred my line drawing on. Now, the line drawing um, is in the pattern. right there, and it is actual size. So if this is what I did. If you line up the top edge of your line drawing on that eight and a half by 11 to the top edge and the left-hand side of your surface, it's right where it needs to be. That's how I, I laid it out. So when I'm transferring, um, I use two things. I don't transfer with a stylus. I take my line drawing into place, and I, and I like to use white graphite um, on this. I really don't like dark graphite lines showing, but sometimes it's essential. Uh, so I used a white graphite on this one, and I traced using one of my Uniball pens. This is the Cygnos. The reason I use these is twofold. Is one, um, it's a very fine, fine point, so you don't get heavy graphite lines. And it's a stainless steel ball, so you don't have to press too hard to get this image to transfer. So it's just tracing your outline, putting enough pressure on it so that it does transfer from the white graphite onto your surface. But once you start working with a very fine point to do this, you're going to love it because your lines are not going to be so strong and they're also not going to be very difficult to get rid of when it comes time to. So that's why I use that Uniball signal. And I also use it a little later on in this process as well because it is a really good quality Japanese gel ink that's in there. And it's perfect for this type of work and it works beautifully over top of these acrylics. So now I'm going to talk to you about base coating these flowers. I generally use my good old number two rigger for base coating these flowers because I, it's appropriate to the size of those petals. And I use warm white. And I want to show you a little trick I use for painting flowers. 
I paint in the direction of and the shape of the petal. So I try to pull the paint in one fluid movement until the, face, the space is filled up. When I move on to the next petal, I do the same thing. If you watch. Except where the petals overlap, I leave a very fine space. As close as I can get it, and it's the same with the petals underneath. I like to leave that little space. The reason being is I absolutely detest having to trace over <laughs> a painted surface. So if I do it this way, I don't have to. So I keep it nice and tight. And again, I always follow the shape and the length. And that actually serves me very well in that it creates that stria that occurs naturally in the petals. And it allows me to not have to trace the blessed thing again. I really don't like doing that because it's never as accurate the second time around. And I'm never happy with how it comes out. So I only trace once. Old habits die hard. You know. So I just continue until I have all of my petals base coated. And I do something similar with the center of the flower as well. So I, the center of that flower does not have a smooth edge, so I don't paint it that way. But I do leave a very small gap where the petals meet the center. And there's a little detail in the center, you'll notice, that produces sort of a little dip in the middle of the flower. And I leave that fine line there as well, as fine as I can possibly get it. Just to remind you of where all of those sh the shadings and, and the shape. So if you continue on painting in each of these petals, they do take on a nice shape. And I generally only use one coat of white. And I'll show you why. Because the next coat that I put on to some of these petals, not all of them, is the Decor Gesso. This is the Media Gesso. And it gets painted on in the same fashion. So let me show you the piece I have prepped. So here's the piece I have prepped. And you'll notice um, some of these petals only have one coat of white paint. And then some of the ones up top have a coat of gesso on them. And you'll notice when you put the gesso on in the same fashion uh, that I did with the, with the warm white, it produces those fine stria, those tiny fine lines in the petals. And by having the brighter white over top of the lighter, the um, the ones with the less coverage, it kind of produces that a little dimension right off the bat. So I'm going to show you how to put that gesso on. The other thing is that gesso also works really nicely for the center because it creates a little texture in there as well. And it's just, you know, sort of pity patting it in. So I've got a little gesso on this brush. to pull it uh, this petal, I think. So when I pull it in, I start at the outside edge, and again, I go the full length of that petal. But the gesso builds up just a fine ridge at the edge and the end of the petal, so it just gives it a little more dimension. And it gives it a little bit more re realism and it comes in handy when you do the next step, when you start shading all of these flowers and you know, putting all of those you know, design elements in, then the flowers become a little more elevated still. So 
So that gesso does wonderful things. So you just continue until you have the stems and the center of the flowers and all of those petals have got the white and the gesso on, or just the white if you prefer. If you don't have any of the gesso, then just use a couple extra coats of the, of the warm white. It will work just as well. So I have to go back to this fellow right here. See, we have all of our petals in. So let's, while that gesso is drying on that, let's talk about this dragonfly. So the dragonflies are really fun and they're really interesting to do and they're very simple. They're, it's not rocket science. Um, I'm going to work with a little bit of cobalt, or carbon black in the fluid acrylic. And there's two dragonflies on this little piece. I'm going to use my rigger to do this. The body of the dragonfly is painted with carbon black. Just take a little care going around those wings. The wings have just been um, base coated with one coat of warm white. And you can use gesso as well if you like, but just one coat of warm white will do the trick. I love how these fluid acrylics move. They're, it's almost like painting with very opaque ink. <laughs> it makes things very simple. So there's nothing, no rocket science here. It's just filling in that, that black space of the dragonfly. It doesn't need to be neat. And I'll keep the edges clean and crisp, but uh, it doesn't have to be utterly perfect. This is mixed media. It's supposed to be fun and you can create all sorts of interesting effects just using things you have laying around. Like I said, we're going to create some fun effects using those uh, enchanted and enchanted shimmer. They're so cool. It's one of those things. My friend Sandy has also got a giveaway going on her Facebook page this week with the enchanted shimmer and the enchanted. It's the newest product that Decor has put out. Um, her and I had the opportunity to play and, and work with it while we were in Germany in, in uh, January. It's exciting. It's always fun working with new product um, and then getting to try a few things out is always great. Figuring out ways that you can use it in your own work. And who doesn't like shimmery butterfly wings and shimmery dragonfly wings and beetles and things like that. Those beautiful iridescent colors. So now I've got this guy's just about done. So while he's drawing, I'm going to come up here because we have a wee little guy, little shadowed fellow that's floating around out here. I'm just going to fill him in with a little bit of that carbon black. He's just a shadow because he's male. So if you happen to have a little dragonfly stamp um, and would prefer to use that, go right ahead. You don't have to paint every detail. Oh my goodness, we've got people from North Carolina, from oh my girls in Texas. Hey girls, my yellow roses. And we have some friends in Bolivia with us today too. Holy crow. You know what? I think that we should just, you know, get rid of the UN and just get a whole bunch of painters to handle it. <laughs> yeah, we might not get a whole lot done, but the world would be a lot more colorful. Okay, so we got our little dragonfly done and our big one. So now we're going to have some fun. 
this is where, like, I know we're having fun with this as it is, but we're going to have some fun with matte medium. You know, Decor makes a lot of great products, but um, between matte medium and Decor decoupage, I think those are probably two of the products that I use the most. I absolutely love matte medium. The stuff is amazing. So we're going to use matte medium to apply some paper to our dragonfly. Now, if you if you have the pattern, you're going to notice right off the bat that yeah, the pattern, the paper, pardon me, the paper that I used is actually from an old German to English dictionary. Uh, I've had it, my father brought it back from from Europe in the 1950s. And um, it sort of stuck around and it's hung around and it ended up in my art studio and then eventually it started getting used for a variety of things. But I love working with it because that paper is so thin and the color, I mean, it, the book is, was made in 1956 and it has this great aged appearance to it. And I just love how it looks. So that's why I used it. But then when I was putting the pattern together, I thought, well, not everybody's gonna be able to get their hands on that. So I drew out the dragonfly right onto it and then color copied it into the pattern so that we have that image. So if you don't have some, you know, some vintage paper, at least you've got this element here. So what I'm going to do is cut out the wings. Um, I'm gonna cut this down a little, like so. So it's just the wings that we need. So I'm going to cut that out. Now, if I was cutting fabric, I'd probably be missing a digit about now. But because it's paper, I'm going to see. There we go. So I'm going to, just to get rid of this excess paper. Oops. Now I'm going to cut away. I'm going to cut to the line. I don't want to go past the line. I'm just going to cut to it. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. Just makes more, things more interesting. And even if you can see this line, that's okay too, because we're going to be doing some ink work over top of this, and it won't matter. So there's one wing. Always a good idea to have a really good pair of decoupage scissors. Um, my favorites, or these ones are from Westcott, they are sharp as razors. They have a great sharp point on them, so it makes it easy to cut into detail with them. Some wonderful person at uh, AFCI a couple of years ago gave me a pair and I now have about six pairs of them because, well, you know, one just isn't enough. Uh, Francois Savoie, she wants to know what size brush I'm using. Um, the stencil brush that I used is, this is the half inch, or the five eighths, I'm sorry, five eighths stencil brush. The, um, the brush that I used to apply the color is a three quarter black gold angled shader. The, Rigger brush. This is the one that I use for doing all of my lettering, and I also use it a lot for doing these these daisies. Is number two Rigger, and you can find all of these brushes on thebrushguys.com. They're they're my my go tos. I love the guys. They're awesome. So, um, and they actually have a discount code on their website. Um, so if you end up ordering brushes, um, use my name Tracy M as your discount code, and it'll save you a little extra cash on your order. Okay, so now I have all four wings, and I'm gonna show you a, a nifty little trick. Get all of the paper out of the way here. So I have all my wings here. I'm going to use a little bit of matte medium. This is Decor Matte Medium. This is great stuff. It dries perfectly clear. It doesn't yellow. 
and it dries dead flat now. It's fantastic. So I'm going to put a coat of the matte medium over the whole drying fly. You're never going to see it anyway, so it's just easier instead of fiddling around trying to paint these little small spaces. Now, you want to get this paper wet. So get it into your water dish, you know, where you're putting the brushes. And when the paper is wet, paper stretches when it gets wet. And by doing it this way, it lays nice and flat. No ripples, no bumps, no bubbles. It just lays there nice and flat. So you get that paper wet. And you can lay it right into place. The other part is that when it's wet, you can move the paper around a little bit. Look at that. And you do the same thing with this one. I usually just keep a dish of clean water next to me on my painting table, and it, this just seems to be the easiest way to do that. So look how smoothly that goes on. And one more wing. Let me get that in there. Take a little of the excess off. And lay that on there. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Look how easy that went on. So now I've got dragonfly wings nice and tight. You give that a few minutes to dry and then you'll be able to apply one more coat of the matte medium over top of it. And it will be in there for the duration. It'll be in there nice and tight. This stuff dries very quick. It dries to a nice Lowly, nice dead flat finish, so you're not going to get shiny spots, and you're not going to get an irregularity when you're burnishing afterwards. So that's what works well. That little trick of wetting the paper, things lay nice and flat, no bubbles, no ripples. You know, it's nice and tight to the surface. Easy peasy. Love this stuff. So great. So this one has got to go dry, obviously, but I do have one trick. Look at that. Nice and tight. No. Oh, love it. Love it, love it, love it. I don't like it when things don't work well. <laughs> so the next stage is to start adding some details um, to both the flowers and to the dragonflies. And, and this part is so simple. So where is my Joe Sonia? I got my Joe Sonia out. Goodness, it's hard to get open. Um, I'm going to get my angle, this one, I'm working with a 3 8 angle. Uh, this one is faux squirrel, but you can use faux squirrel or you can use black gold or whichever small angle that you're most comfortable with. So again, I dress that brush in the Joe Sonia's. Now we're going to start with uh, the shading on these daisies. And this part is so simple. I got a tip load on that angled shader of that cobalt teal hue, which is that brilliant blue that we were using in the background, remember, up in this corner? That brilliant blue. And this is where I use all my shading. So it's just a float around the center of that flower, like that. And you walk it out just a little bit. You notice I, I am not too careful about this. It's just getting a little of that color and then letting it sort of travel a little bit onto the petals. I love how this looks up there. And it, it's soft. It's not, you know, we're not, um, not worrying too much about accuracy at this point. Just getting that color around there. It's very transparent, so it's easy. And it doesn't hurt it. You notice I'm not worrying about every individual petal at this point. I'm just getting that color towards the center of the flower. And then, I'm going to tip load it again. And this is where you're going to start separating a few of those petals. And it's just a light float underneath and not everywhere. I just, you know, just to separate some of these 
a little bit. Wherever the petals overlap, it's just a slap dash float. It's not meticulous. It isn't, I don't worry about the perfection part. It just makes things, gives things a little bit of depth without fiddling around with it too much. Easy peasy. And that's as difficult as that is. I love that these float acrylics are so transparent because if you want them to be a little darker, you want your shading a little darker, it's very easy to bump it up a little bit. You don't have to fiddle too much. And it also gives you a lot more control so that you're not overdoing it. So that same blue, and on the same brush, I'm going to come down to the dragonfly and pull a little of that color into the wings closest to the body. I think I want that a little stronger. So just closest to the body and down a little. I like that little hint of blue. Down into here. And then I like to take it out to the tip of the wing as well. It just makes things interesting. And it gives the wings some grounding. It pulls the flower and the dragonfly together, pulling color from one element into another, even in the most subtle way, will help balance the image. And that's such a pretty blue. Now, if you didn't want to use the paper for the wings, just paint them in opaque white and shade them highlight them the same way using that cobalt blue. It's very pretty. Okay, so we're going to rinse that brush out and now we have to get some color into these stems. So I'm going to use, this is the green gold. This is a really vibrant green, and I'm using my rigger to put that color in. You notice that I base coated all the stems the same as I did the flowers, because I wanted that vibrancy, that bright color. And the best way to do that with these float acrylics is to give them a nice opaque background so that you're not putting layers and layers and layers of paint on. So I'm using just a little bit of gesso or white paint and then go right over it with one coat of green gold. Just like that. Pretty, pretty. And I'll do the same thing up here. Nice thing about a number two rigger is that I can open that puppy up, press down, and look at that. And the paint just slides off this brush. It's so cool. Great color, this green gold, so pretty. So I got that green gold for the stem. It's got a high yellow content, so right now it's reading very yellow, but we are going to put a shading color on this. And so that shading color will help ground, ground this a little bit. Rinse out that brush. So we have our blue in here. Now we need a nice counterpoint, something really to pop it. So I'm going to pull a little bit of the diabrolite yellow because that yellow is just need a small round brush for this. Look at this yellow. It, this is such a bright yellow. It's so pretty. So there's the yellow in our centers. Remember what I said about the gesso creating a little bit of texture? This is where you really get to see that texture pop, is when you put that transparent yellow over top of it. And look at that. So now we've got all this great texture in the center. 
I've got a little bit of vermilion. I think we need some of that, that heat in the centers of these flowers just to make them pop a little bit. Vermilion is such a great color. Naphthol is another one. Um, the vermilion is that in your face orange right there. Let's use a little bit of that. So I've got a little vermilion. I'm gonna come back in with that angled shader. As soon as that is dry, it's taking a little bit. So then let's do those stems while we're waiting for that yellow to dry. So the color I'm using for those stems is sap green. And it's a very dark green. It, the Americana um, conversion is plantation pine. So it's a very dark, very transparent green. So I'm going to put a little shadow underneath those petals. And right there. It's a great color. And I'm going to pull that shadow along the left side of the stem. Again, you don't fiddle with it, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's just a little bit to darken that green, like so. Just let go. Plantation, great color. Paint is drying very slow. The diorilla does not want to dry. So I'm going to diorilla yellow looks great with a bit of like hot orange on it. So I'm going to pull a little of that vermilion right along like so. And remember there's a dip in the middle of that flower. I'm going to put a little float there to add in something on this top. Vermilion, and I'm going to pull that vermilion in there. These flowers are really starting to take shape. Oh, I'm just going to rinse the orange out of that. Holy smokes. <laughs> it's a strong orange. So we've got the stem with the green gold and shaded with a little of that sap green. We have all of our wonderful petals. They are shaded with that cobalt teal hue, close to the center and underneath, I'm just gonna wanna, underneath in the overlap of the petal. I'm gonna pull a little shadow there. Now we do have to deepen this a little bit. And you know that I can't paint anything without using some asphalto. So we have a shvolta. Now a lot of people look at this and think, oh, why would you put brown over everything? Technically, although it looks like brown and you think it's brown, it's more of a yellow. And it has a yellow effect, a yellowing effect, when you use it over top of other colors. So I like to use it to subdue and accentuate some of these textures. So I'm putting a very weak float of a shvolta wherever that blue is. And it does two things. It softens the look of the flowers. It deepens the color a little, but it also keeps it from looking a little too artificial. Whereas the blue might not necessarily be a completely natural look. You put blue and yellow over top of it, it gives it a greenish cast, which works well for this type of thing. Same thing on this one. I've heavily thinned it. It is not straight out of the bottle, so it just softens the effects quite nicely. And it, it's great for antiquing and for aging. I love it for antiquing. I love Schwalte for antiquing. Now, there is a trick to um, when I do my line drawings or transition or trace things onto 
my surface. Sometimes the line drawings kind of get lost a little bit. And so I, when I have something like that, I'll go around it and float right around the line drawing before I do any painting. I'll float a shadow all the way around it and into some of the details so that I can see where the shape shapes begin and where they end. And so it just makes it easier to paint, especially when you've got a lot of things going on in the background. It just makes things so much simpler. So I'm gonna get a little more water. I'm gonna put another little float of asphaltum right here on the back edge of that flower a little bit. I just needed to get a little distance back here. Fulton is a terrific color for a whole bunch of things, but I really like it, particularly for shading. I just find it gives everything a nice, soft, warm look. Even when you're working with bright, bright colors, it sort of subdues things without killing the color altogether. So now I'm just going to deepen a couple of shadows on these daisies on the stems. I wasn't too happy with those. So I'm going to clean them up a little bit here and here. All right. Looking pretty good. So the daisies, I like finishing them off with um, little dots, little dip dots. And I usually do those in the centers with a little asphaltum and some warm white or some black. I wanted to tone these a little bit with a little float of asphaltum just to soften them a bit. take my little carbon black, I think, and a little asphaltum together so that it's not completely black. And I'm just going to add a few dots. And I always come out over the petals a little bit, like so. You can use the tip of the brush. You can use a stylus, whatever you, whatever you like to do. I just like the few little dots and then I repeat that with the warm white as a highlight. I like how that little bit of color just sort of softens how these flowers look. And you can choose to put a whole bunch on or a little bit. That's entirely up to you. The stylus, I find, makes nice uniform dots. I tend to go for the brush because then they're a little less so, a little less consistent. But they're also a bit more uniform with the stylus. So there we have our centers done. Now, remember we talked about um, the pen. I use this pen for so many things. And I kind of like taking that just to the edge of my flowers and it's a little sketchy line. I don't, neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. And I'll just trace the edges of the petal. Remember I told you about that, um, those spaces? They become less important when you do this. They become less noticeable when you do this. And I just like how it sort of softens the look of the flowers. And you can do it as consistent or as irregular as you like. But I would just, I like to trace them. I also use that pen to do these little lines towards the center like this. You know, there's always some little lines that radiate out from the, the petals. Easy peasy. Gives them a sketchy look and they're fun. I like it. I do this a lot. 
I just, especially for mixed media, I just like the way it looks. You know, it gives it a, a softer appearance. And you can do the same thing to the stems. It's not just the petals. You can do it all along the edges. It just, and these pens work so well over top of these photographs. And we do have those pens on my website, so if you're looking for them. Now, in the line drawing, there's some fun little sketchy filler plants, like filler leaves and stems. And that's, I just sort of sketch those in using this pen. And it doesn't, it's not going to come out perfect and it's better when it doesn't. Easy. So you just continue along until you have really fun sketchy loose look to your flowers and you're going to do the same thing to the dragonfly when you come down here to this dragonfly you take that pen and just a sketchy outline and I like going around the wing the sort of on the some of it's on the paper, some of it's on the background. It just gives them a nice look. Easy. The nice part is, is I can put matte medium over top of this once it's completely dry. It's matte medium is not, the ink is not bothered by the matte medium. Like that. So I'm just going to finish off these petals on this top flower here, and then we'll be ready to tackle the, the next step. There's always Almost everything that I design has words in it somewhere. <laughs> I like the script lettering. Sometimes it's cut out of paper, sometimes it's you know, hand drawn or hand painted or what have you. But um, I just like seeing words. I love words. I love to read. I like to draw lettering. I love calligraphy. So it's just natural for me to incorporate some words of some sort into it. And this one kind of struck me. I saw this in a book I was reading. And, and the quote was, go pick daisies and you know, I really liked it. So I thought it would make a cute art piece. And so I used it in there. So we're going to cut that out of, right out of the pattern. You can make a photocopy of it if you wish. Um, but uh, I'm just going to cut it out of the copy that I've made of, of this one. I really like the sketchy work. I'm always better. There. So I think I'm just about there with the sketch things. I really like it. Oh my goodness, I had a whole bunch of people saying hi. Susan Haley, uh, Lori Martinez, Kathy Hellison, Hellison, I'm sorry, dear. Uh, Paula Ransdell, Ransdell? And oh, my girl Sheila, hope things are good down the valley, love. And to Linda Frick, hi Linda, thank you for coming. My son keeps handing me notes because I can't see the screen, so. <laughs> Does he, he's making sure that I, I say my hellos to everybody. I really appreciate you guys coming to play. I just thought this would be a fun way to spend a Saturday. And then I can impart a little bit of my so-called wisdom, if you will, and, uh, and we can spend a little creative time together. 
Okay, so I've got all of my inking done, I think. I'm happy with my flowers, I'm happy with my dragonfly. So I put my pen away, and I think the next step is going to be finishing this dragonfly. I think our dragonfly needs something. So I have a nice little 3 8 angle, and I'm going to pick up just a little tiny, tiny bit of warm white. And it just needs a little highlight right here and a little bit on these segments. It's just a little L-shaped float just to give him some shape, hopefully. And I'll let him dry and then I'm really thinking that we need to, we really need to play with this. So this deck work Enchanted is a really neat product. It is a top coat and it has an iridescent pigment. And now if you know anything about iridescent pigments, they come out of the out of the bottle or out of the tube white with just a little bit of shimmer. See if you can pick that up. You can see that it's got slight greenish cast on it, but for the most part it looks white. They're hard enough when you have three or four different colors of the iridescence on one palette you have to mark them because you won't be able to tell which color is which. So I'm going to just pick this up as if I'm going to float, which means I've just got a little bit of that white, or this is the green, sorry. See, I got it mixed up right off the bat. I've got a little bit of the green and I'm going to, oh my goodness, look at this. I'm just going to float a little bit of that enchanted the green, just the enchanted, onto the, the body of this dragonfly. Oh my goodness, look at that. It's got this great green iridescent shimmer. It's so pretty. That's a really nice effect on there. And of course, the wings have to get a little love too, so we're going to use, this is the white. And I don't think, oh my goodness, this one's so new. Okay. It is white. I'm gonna have to do a little test because I haven't used this one. I wanna do a little test to make sure it's not opaque, <laughs> but I don't think it is. It really isn't. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of that enchanted shimmer, I'm using the white, right over top of the wings. Now you can't, you don't necessarily see a change in color but there is a tiny shimmer to it. All the, this little, I don't really want to call it glitter because it's finer than that. Oh, this is pretty. So it has this pearlescent iridescence to it. And then it has this gorgeous shine. So laying flat, obviously, it's not going to show off as much, but when the light changes, it's gorgeous. So pretty. I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but there's this great shimmery quality to it. I guess they're aptly named, but then they have a slight iridescent, in the white, anyway, there's a slight iridescent shimmer like pearls, which is really, really pretty. Very pretty. I love the dragonfly with the green, it's gorgeous. So I'm gonna put just a little highlight here. Just with a, a little touch of warm white, just to pop that a little. Really pretty, I like it. So yeah, that enchanted shimmer makes the wings really pop out. They're going to look awesome when they're completely dry. It's just that little sparkle added to the wings, which is great. So next we have, we have to put our words on and then we have to do the edge. The edge is going to be fun. So words it is, if I can find my list, where's the list? There it is. Okay, so in the pattern we have uh, go pick daisies and have a happy heart. So I have some fun little edging scissors. I like edging scissors because it makes things interesting. You can, uh, which ones are these? These are from Fiskars. I'm using bat wings, which is kind of fun. It's 
it's not perfectly square, so it'll make things interesting. I'm going to cut these out with the edging scissors. Fun, fun, fun. Just go pick daisies. There we go. I like the irregularities and having things that are not quite perfect makes things more interesting. So I've got that one there. I'm going to decide where these are going. Uh, I like that. What do you think, guys? I think that works for me. So again, with the matte medium, um, and this is very bright, don't you find? It doesn't quite match this paper and it doesn't quite match the, the lettering. So um, I'm thinking that we should age this a little. So I'm going to pick up a little of it. You guessed it. I should fault them. And I'm going to run a little across the bottom. Just a light float, nothing too over the top. Just to age that paper a little bit. It's not really a float, I'm just sort of smacking on a wash of a spaltum across the bottom. I think if it was all over it, it might be too strong and then it would just look dirty. I kind of like the idea of just having it across the bottom. And it just ages the edge of that, kind of makes the paper look like it was torn from something. Okay, so we're going to, let me find my angle brush here. So I'm going to put a little matte medium right here, and again I'm going to get that paper wet and dip it into my water, and it does make a big difference. So we're just going to lay that into that wet medium, and it would help if I got it the right way. <laughs> okay, there we go. Put it in the right spot, put the right one in the right spot would make a world of difference. And just brush that smooth. And then I'll get the Go Pick Daisies. And I'll lay that into the wet medium. Like so. And I'll brush that out nice and smooth. And the Have a Happy Heart will go over here. And I'll dip that into the water. If you get that paper wet, it makes a world of difference. And lay that there. Whoops. There we go. Nice. There we go. The nice thing about this matte medium is that you can go over top of everything that you've done with the matte medium and it gives you a nice uniform surface everywhere and it protects the work that you've already finished so if I were to take that matte medium and go over everything like so it protects everything that I've already done just like that and it dries quick so I'm not having to wait for ever in a day for things to dry and set up. Okay. Done. Oh, the aging scissors or edging scissors? Is that what you're asking, Christy? Edging scissors I'm using is, are from Fiskars. So those are the bat wings, the or to age the edges of the the paper. I just used a float of Eschfaltum, which is that dark brown color that I use a lot of. This one right here. It's just a float, and I just put it along the bottom of the page. Ooh, we're getting there. We're getting there. 
So we only have a couple of things left to do, and one is to age the edges of this panel. And there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can use the, the rolled technique using a brush loaded with black and go around the outside edge to create sort of a chipped look. Um, but I kind of very partial to sort of that aged and worn look, that distressed look. So I like using my stamp head to stamp pad and I just rub the edges like so all the way around. And then you can lay it flat in the corners and it gives you a nice aged look at the corners like that. See how fun that is? It gives it, and it finishes the edges of this type of thing really, really nicely. You can move in more if you want to or keep it very narrow if you want to. It's very easy to control. I like the, you know, where the, the edges are very irregular and, and imperfect. I really like that look. So I've taken my stamp pad all the way around. I love how that looks on these finished pieces. And we'll give that just a couple of seconds to dry. This, these um, stays on stamp pads really don't take that long to dry once they're on the surface. So now it comes back to, we're back to this, the stencil. Remember in this piece, I did the stenciling first. And so you can see that it, it sort of hides in behind elements. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you use it last. Because that's going to be one of our final things on this piece. Oops. Oops. Oops, I broke the paper. <laughs> oh, there we go. So we'll give this a second. And again, remember what I said about taking it off the surface so that we don't have makes things more interesting if it goes off the surface. So here we go. I'll take out my stencil brush. I'm using just a small amount of warm white on my stencil brush. I want it imperfect. I don't want them all done. I want some done, portions of others done. Um, it just makes them more interesting. Pretty, pretty. I like that. And again, when I do it in the other corners, I want to make sure that it's irregular and imperfect. So I go off the page again. I just like how this looks. I like that sort of irregularity. I like the softer look of it. It just, it just works for me. And you can pick and choose where it goes. You can add more or you can add less. You can come back in with some of your stamps if you want to. You're not relegated to just doing exactly what the pattern says. So have some fun with it. So we've got another step finished. We have one last thing to do. Well, sorry, two last things to do. I'm going to spatter this. Um, my friend Sandy <laughs> likes to spatter using the tap technique, you know, where you're loading the brush with paint and you tap it like this. That one never works for me. I always end up getting far too much um, paint on my surface and I'm never happy with it. So I use the technique that ruins your manicure. And I load my brush up, and again, I'm using that big old bristle brush that I used at the beginning to do that paint finish. And I use the tip of my finger just to lightly spatter everywhere. And I do it first with a little bit of white, and then I rinse my brush out, and then I do it again with a little bit of black. Because I like that combination of those two things. So I'm gonna get into that carbon black, and I'm gonna spatter with a little carbon black. So fun. There we go, we've got the black on, we've got the white on, and then last but not least, and to me this is always an important thing, 
you have to take ownership of what you create. You've spent a lot of time creating it and it's been hard work and you have to reward yourself and show it off to the world and put your, oops. That's why matte medium is so great. When you whoopsie like that, you can just wipe things off. So I just, too much water in my brush. So now I'm gonna come back and I'm just gonna put my initials on here, TM. Cosa. Done like dinner. And there, you're ready to go pick daisies and have a happy heart. This was a really fun piece when I originally designed it and it, it doesn't get old. I still enjoy doing it a lot. So take your time with this. Really enjoy the whole process because you can do so much more than you think you can. Throw in a few things, throw in your own ideas, um, switch it up, use different color schemes, use different stamps, use different stencils, use polka dots if you want to instead of diamonds. Um, just to, the most important thing is that you have a lot of fun while you do this. So I wanted to say thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Come and see me again. I'll see you again soon.